Okay. Okay, so when you came over then, yeah. you were just, when you came, I guess, for the holiday, you saw, um, you saw that there was a bit more diversity in London than obviously where you were in, is it in Vincenza? Vincenza. Vincenza. Yeah. Um, and you saw people who were obviously working here, doing well, and you thought, let's come and try see what you can do. So what, when you, can you just tell us a little bit sort of in terms of like just work um, and opportunities of finding accommodation? How was that when you came to the UK? Right. So when I came to the UK, um, I mean, I was blessed to um, be, you know, to be able to live with my um, family. So I had my, my dad's cousin. Um, who lived in Walthamstow? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds there. sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yes, so I had my 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 uncle's family, the, um, who lived in uh, Walthamstow. So okay. I had the opportunity, great opportunity, to um, live with the family mm -hmm. nice. um, for a couple of years. And um, that's that's really what that was my foundation, really, mm -hmm. because that's where I I saw um, I had the opportunity to work out what I wanted to do, um, and you know, and also I didn't really have the pressure of uh, oh gosh, um, bills are coming, or yeah. <laughs> you know, th those kind of things. I didn't have that kind of pressure, so mm -hmm. that I, it gave me some breathing time. Mm -hmm. Um, to start looking into, you know, what I wanted. Um, I guess um, at the beginning, um, there were difficulties because, you know, it's a new country, um, a new new way of life. Um, I and presume also, your English was probably good when you first came. It was, I mean, I have to say that it was okay ish so okay um so that wasn't much of a struggle language barrier side of things i mean there's something i think this is a is more like of a trivial issue but mm. but it was it was um a limitation for me okay the accent i just couldn't understand some people <laughs> Some people would just be talking so fast, and then I would be true. looking at their face, um, even their lips, to work out what what they mean. Trying to lip read, oh. and, I, and I and I and I just wouldn't understand. Mm. And sometimes it, it, um, there were so many embarrassing stories. Like there were times where I would meet someone, and you know the person will start having a conversation, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and the, and then I would be looking at them. And you know they they probably they were probably making this cracking some jokes. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I was just looking at them, and then they were expecting me to laugh, yeah. when I wasn't laughing. Mm -hmm. So imagine. <laughs> they were like, "I'm funny." Yeah. yeah. Where's the laugh? <laughs> yeah, they were expecting me to laugh, but I said, "Man, I didn't <laughs> understand the word you just said. How can I laugh?" <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. Little language. <laughs> yeah. Little lang. Mm. And then I guess you've got to learn different accents as well, because you've got like people from say, East London versus maybe if you were like around central London and maybe some people who are a little bit better, you know, well-spoken or whatever. So yeah. It's understandable. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, there were, when I first came, I switched on the TV, I watched BBC mm. and I would just understand everything. Uh, you know people were just pronouncing words and you can you it reminded me of my english teacher in italy oh, so no. i i just i could just follow what they what they were saying yeah. what they meant but then i go i step out of the house mm -hmm. and you 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 hear people just skipping letters all together <laughs> whoa, whoa, they, so, but some people i mean now now i of course i understand them but yeah. some people they were they were just murdering the language so funny <laughs> 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 I mean, <laughs> it's just like we don't have time. It's London town. We've got, we've got money to make. You know, speaking this real English is effort. No, I'm joking. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I know, I know. It's a struggle. That's so funny. Okay, so you came sort of getting get into grips, I guess, with language and people and locations and stuff in terms of like, did you find it difficult to get work? Obviously, that was the main issue. Italy, finding jobs was difficult. Finding work here when you came, was that all right? Um, I have to say, when I first came, I just didn't know what to do. Mm. Like, I knew there were so many opportunities, mm. but I didn't know where to start from. Mm -hmm. So, um, it was, so what, what I just decided to do was to, um, get a job, you know, to, to pay for my travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I can I, I I knew I wouldn't just be able. Yes, yes, I, I I'm blessed that you know I live with, with a family, mm. but I need to pay for my transport. Mm -hmm. I need to pay for my day to day stuff. You know, yeah. I can't just rely on other people. Yeah. I, I need to be independent. So I said, let me find a job that will give me money. Okay. Would, so any job. Yeah, give me any. Something. Give me any job that will give me an income. Mm -hmm. And I started applying, uh, I applied for retail, I applied for here. So like the first jobs that I was seeing, um, and then my, so I asked my family, so where's the job center where I can find, I can look for jobs. Yeah. So they showed me the job center. I was their best friend. I used to be go there every day <laughs> and <laughs> scroll to the jobs and see what's, what's up. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I was their friend when I, I, I know they, they wouldn't recognize me today, but <laughs> I, I, they, they used then. to see me back then. They used to see me all the time. Okay. So. I applied, 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 and guess what job I got? What job? Da, 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 da. I'm loving yeah. it. Wait, what's that? <laughs> I'm McDee's. Oh my god! For some reason, <laughs> Nike was in my head. I don't know why I've got Nike. Anyway, <laughs> oh my McDee's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That was obviously part of your dream when you were in Italy. So yeah, you come I to the UK. always, I always. <laughs> the thing is, my dream was to flip in those bangers <laughs> and you know, putting them like to get in the bangers dressed and oh, uh, fries, getting the fries out to the customers mm -hmm. and getting drinks. And you know the McFlurry, the oh, the ice McFlurry. cream. Oh my you goodness! You know that machine. Yeah, that was my dream to operate that machine and really get everyone happy. So that was your first job. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I knew you went to McDonald's, but I didn't know that was your first UK yeah, yeah, job. Yeah, oh. Yeah. That was my first job. You know, I was there. I enjoyed those burgers. They oh were very my nice. Goodness. Very tasty. Okay. All right. So you found something, got yourself a little bit settled. You've got now a, some income, so you're not fully, fully dependent on your family. And then obviously I met you when we had left McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> we transitioned um, into healthcare. Mm -hmm. So briefly give us a, like a little synopsis, I guess, of since McDonald's, what you've done um, and where you are now. Um, and sort of how I guess you have got to where you are now in terms of like your educational background, things even that you bought from Italy, what we've added added in the UK since we've been here. And yeah, let's go with that first. Okay, McDonald's. 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 Hey, those were times. I'm telling you, that's a testimony. Anyway, continue. <laughs> sorry, sorry, girl. Sorry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Okay, so McDonald's was um was an interesting time because um it was my first I would say my first paid working experience. Mm -hmm. I've worked in Italy before, but I've done a lot of unpaid they call it stage internship. Oh. You know, oh, wow. it's, it's a way to exploit people without paying them. Okay. Yeah, so that's what they used to do to me <laughs> in Italy. So I've done a lot of that, but okay. I never actually did a paid job, job. in okay. Italy. So McDonald's was interesting because, you know, I was getting, yeah, it was minimum wage, but mm. it was still money mm. and um, interesting. Okay. So um, I, I th I'm, I'm happy 
so I mean, right now, I, I wouldn't, I would have never said that when I was working there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm happy. Uh, that wasn't the word I would have said. But yeah. Today, I'm happy. I think about that time, mm -hmm. and I am happy. I am happy because you have to start from the bottom mm. to enjoy where you are, mm. to enjoy what life gives you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was bad. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. I used to burn my hands. Mm. I used to listen to some... So I can't say it here, but um, oh. yeah, I had to listen to some stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it, it was necessary. Mm. It was necessary because right now, I am able to deal with a lot of pressure. Mm. I am able to deal with challenging situations. Mm. Yeah, when things go wrong, I know. I can, I, I have, I, I bec it's, ma it's made me a very, very tough individual mm. because I had to go through a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I had to become humble. I had to be humble mm -hmm. because imagine McDonald's is not a place. It, it It's not really where graduates would, would go. Would go yeah. You know, you finish university. Yeah. That is, that is, it's not McDonald's you go to. You go to somewhere else. Yeah. You yeah. want office. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice office, you know, nice environment. You mm. don't go and flip beggars. Mm. So when you go, when you have to um, do that job, you really, you, you have to be humble. Yeah. You have to learn how to take instructions from people that are way, way, way less qualified than you are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to, you know, when, even when, when we talk about, I mean, right now, um, it's been a while. Yes. But you have to understand that a lot of people that were there couldn't really spell. Mm. They couldn't spell. In, my, in English, I don't English. see you or not even... This isn't your first language, and anyway. <laughs> you're not... like, hold on a second. This is my language for like plus one, <laughs> and y'all aren't even speaking the language. Yeah, that but we're working. in all fairness, some of, some of those people they were also uh, foreigners oh, like okay. myself, so Correct. I can understand. I mean, we need to put that into consideration. Yeah. So they were not from this country, mm. but if you think about somebody that doesn't understand the language mm. you have better language skills than them yeah those people are instructing you yeah and they are not even being respectful yeah they are being disrespectful and they're bullying you mm. yeah so it's um it's it's a hard pill to swallow mm. but if you can if you can deal with that you can deal with everything okay yeah, so I do, I mean, it was really, really bad. I used to, I used to cry sometimes, like saying, okay. oh gosh, this is terrible. You know, you're under all this pressure and then you have uh, a midget. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, not figuratively, like, but as a person, mm. um, it's just a midget. Man. Yeah. It, it, it's a midget coming to you and telling you some crap. I mean, mm. uh, I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> 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 but 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 it's not a swear word, is it? Is it? I don't know. I might have to like take it out. We'll see. We'll see. I, <laughs> I hope not. Loads of people say it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. You know. You have to take that and um. Yeah. So it's but it, it gets better. It only gets better. It can't mm, get any worse than that. That's true. Okay, so now let's look, tell us about how it's getting better or it got better to where you are now. So we left McDonald's and somehow we fall into the NHS and then we end up being this fantabulous project manager. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was like a just a little little taster of um, sort of how you got into what you're up to now. Give us a little if what little bits of those things yes so i mean what i can say i mean i'm not going to go into too much detail mm -hmm. um but definitely there's been a growth um it, it's been a, a very i would say a long learning curve because it didn't come easy mm -hmm. but um i 
I took the lessons um, that I learned in um, McDonald's, mm. you know, and um, I decided, you know, I was going to um, find it, obviously a job that would pay me more. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> yeah. I had more demands. So um, I wanted a job that would pay me more and uh, possibly get me towards um what i wanted to do so um i was interested in management roles um so i, I thought that you could you could be a manager anywhere so mm -hmm. but i said um i thought that perhaps the inner chest would be um would be best mainly because um you know there's a lot of um the demands they deal with never ends mm. on like a company private company that is here today and tomorrow goes away I and mean, yeah. the nhs is, is solid you yeah. know it's gonna be there okay so at the time i decided to go for the nhs for that reason so um, also you studied health economics as so. so health economy came later actually ah, so okay. um i did so economics was my background in italy mm. um, and then when i came here i uh, after joining the nhs mm. i went for my master's in health economics ah, yeah, okay. because i wanted to merge the two mm. and uh yeah the health economics was just the perfect merge mm. of uh, healthcare and economics so, so did anyone like give you that idea so what like in terms of reasoning it was purely for the fact that you were like actually healthcare is you know a role or the nhs is a civil service role that mm -hmm. is consistent reliable you know most probably in terms of like employment and i guess the duration of your employment it's something that's like you know sturdy you're mm -hmm. not going to find yourself in a position maybe where your company's broken down was that just your reasoning or did somebody like encourage you did your uncle mention this or your dad or um, or was this just some thoughts that you were having by yourself for to get into healthcare yeah in particular so um getting into healthcare was mainly because um, most of the people i knew were working in healthcare oh, so okay. i knew a lot of nurses mm -hmm. Um, midwives so I, I knew people that were working in healthcare and mm. I just told myself mm, why don't I work in healthcare okay. I mean it okay. seems to be a great place to work mm. you know, people are having a you know it's helping so yeah. it's um, a good place to work so I said I want to That's work fine. for the NHS mm -hmm. so I applied and applied and applied and applied and I got a role um, mm -hmm. as a midwifery assistant yes. in UCLH mm -hmm. and um, yeah so that's where the adventure started mm -hmm. you know I I had um, I learned a lot I made a lot of friends yes. <laughs> including me <laughs> including you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean it's been a positive experience um, I just um, I'm grateful to that experience as well because mm. that that actually launched me into my, into the next steps. Yeah. So you can see, you know, everything is a, like a stepping stone. Mm. You start here, you push yourself forward, and then mm. there, and then you push yourself forward again. Mm. So it's, everything is great stepping stone. Yeah, I like I like the perspective in terms of like again, it's a lot of things that weren't necessarily ideal you know and you come to the uk looking for job and you, we end up with mcdonald's again like you were saying we want to cry but take what you can get from there and then say okay now let's you, at least it's something that now let me move forward and do so and so so i love the fact that you're very positive thinking in that way um which is amazing so i want to say maybe just to sort of wrap up with some final thoughts maybe what would you in terms of advice like if if you could speak maybe to a 20 year old a 19 year old whatever person from italy maybe somebody from ghana who is thinking okay let me come to the uk or come to it or come to the west um and move what would your advice be to that person what would you say advice is very simple uh -huh. give up 
don't even bother. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> After I just commended all your positivity. <laughs> wow. No, 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 that's me. <laughs> Please don't don't listen to that. I was just joking. I would never say it. <laughs> but you know, it, it was needed, you know, to end in a positive note. You know, we needed <laughs> we needed a laugh oh, all cheese. Anyway. <laughs> All right, tell the people the truth, please. Yes, yes, I'm ready for the truth now. Okay, so anyone who is listening to this video, you know, um, just just know that it's um, things are not re they don't really go according to plan. Mm -hmm. You know, we have we have a lot a lot of the time you plan something mm -hmm. and you don't really. That, that plan doesn't really materialize it's for many many reasons and mm. we all know that but what I would say is that take the best out of every situation and use that as a learning mm. because I've always this has been my principle for pretty much all my life mm. you know there's this thing it's not it's not really what I want mm. but let me just make the most out of what i want mm -hmm. and turn it into something else yeah yeah so i i really i mean i've used that and uh, you know i've it's let's worked. say it's worked yes it's, it's worked because i've learned and uh, you know i was flipping burgers <laughs> as i was saying in 2009 mm -hmm. Uh, 2021 even even before 2021 in 2015 i became a manager in the nhs so mm. i mean really is uh, no no condition is permanent yeah and whatever is not working today just use that learn something mm. and flip it mm. it will it will turn into something else mm. yeah so that's uh, that's what i would say maybe take off the flipping part but um I would say just say draw learnings learn learn, learn. and and always be positive have a positive mindset you okay. know you get if you're positive mm. if you're always positive you're optimistic mm. you see that things work out mm. somehow but um you need to have that positive mindset like tell yourself yes you can yes you can do it yes you can do it, yes, you mm. can do it. at the end of the day you will do it mm. so that's my short um advice yeah yeah if you leave me i'll speak to you tomorrow so <laughs> I, I, I will leave it like that i love it okay last one i'm i'm really interested just because you especially as a child i think growing up in italy what would you if you could advise parents maybe who are raising children in a country that isn't i guess their sort of home country or a country where you know your your kids are um immigrant children or kids who don't look like everybody else in their classroom what advice would you give maybe even as a parent as to how to support that their child i guess in this environment where often they are made to feel unwelcome and often they you know already feel just maybe in terms of how they look as though they are already you know ostracized and stand out what advice or what information maybe could you pass on to a parent who is looking after that child maybe or maybe to the child i don't know um to the parents mm -hmm. and uh i think um i'm talking to the parents but i'm also talking about my future self because mm -hmm. at some point i'll also be in the same position amen mm -hmm. amen praise the lord yes uh, so what i wanted to say to such a person would be to love the child mm -hmm. show love to the child and mm -hmm. show them show them that you know let them know that they are special mm -hmm. first thing mm -hmm. second make them aware of who they are mm -hmm. because if you don't tell them who they are or if you don't if they are unable to discover who they are they will anybody can project negative stuff to them mm. yeah for example i was told n words you know you mm. go away you stink you're dirty you're this you're that mm. so if 
if you don't have if i didn't have the um the love mm. from my grandma at that time mm. yeah i'll probably you will probably stick with stick with me it, it, it kind of did i have to say because it's um although i was strong it, it still knocked my confidence yeah. somehow so it had an impact it still had an impact but i'm thinking that if you as a parent, you make sure that you love the child, mm. you tell the child, you know, you're special, uh, you're strong, mm. you know, you're intelligent. Look at how you do this thing. Mm. Look, at, look at how amazing you are here. And they grow with that. Mm. Yeah. Anything bad doesn't, doesn't stick with them. Mm. They, it will be like dust mm. on their shoulder. Yeah. That's what it would be. It would go away. Mm. It would just go away. So, um, yeah, that's all. That's all I would say. Okay. That's nice. Okay. Very good advice. Thank you very much. There isn't anything else you want to add, by the way, is there? Anything else you want to add? Um, a lot, but uh, not for now. <laughs> not for Part now. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> 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 oh this is such a nice conversation there's so many things i learned that i've known you for how many years and i didn't know this but anyway it's fine i'm happy i learned it today but thank you so much for just sitting with me and mm -hmm. going through and sharing your experiences with us your history and your story thank you very much um i really enjoyed this again everybody for listening um this is nor speaks out and i and well and ellie has spoken um and of course we're asking you wahura wahura which means are you listening yes bye guys bye, bye. bye. <laughs>